We just made this 3D social media sign with the QR codes using Canva and Illustrator and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're making a super sick, sweet social media sign with the QR codes and everything. It's like a one-stop shop. That's right, so we've been bringing this cool little infographic with us to the craft shows. It's just a little retractable, standable sign. We can't really make this, we had this printed, but you know, I give that spiel every time when you come by the craft booth that these are made from, painted with exterior house paint, they are fade resistant, weather resistant, yada yada, I have a whole spiel. A whole spiel. It's, yes. it's everything that's right here. So, everything she says is now on a sign. Well, and it's a little bit more about us. It tells a little bit about us. It tells a little bit about uh, our workshops. Yeah, what's KG? How do they stay looking so crisp? Who makes them? We offer paint parties and work DIY workshops too. And this right here. And this, this is like gold. Little, it is. So gold. we found that folks are really scanning this QR code a lot and they stop and they read this as they go by our booth. So we decided that we'd like to have this little QR code not only out at the front of our booth as you're passing by, which is a great place, but also up at the register when they're checking out. Our people will pop in and say, can I grab a card? You know, I wanted them to have this QR code where they it can take you to three different things I want one or you can book a workshop right there on the spot if you do that I'll give you a discount save you a little money the second QR code will take you to our link tree which has all of our social media you can shop with us you can book a workshop you can see our Instagram our Facebook our Amazon everything. store everything about us is right there in that awesome little link tree and then the third thing is our Venmo so if you wanted to pay through Venmo I wanted that QR code right there. All you have to do is scan it, punch in the amount, hits pay, and we're good to go. You know, Venmo. So I know you guys have seen, if you if you have your own little craft side hustle or craft business, you've seen these social media signs. So we wanted to show you how to make it. We want to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you wanted to do this yourself, instead of running over to Etsy and paying somebody for it, you can do this and we're going to show you how. Step one, we're gonna make our design, which is gonna be easy because Kim gave me a mock-up. <laughs> this is what I get. It's, <laughs> it's a post-it note with my vision. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, you do it all the time. I all, all I have time. to do is draw it up on a piece of paper. It's a terrible drawing, I cannot draw, but he can see it, he can usually see, see the it. vision. I got it, <laughs> and we'll go get it in Illustrator. Let's start with a new file. We'll start with a print setup. We'll change the points to inches. We'll make it 20 inches wide. We'll leave it 11 inches tall. We're gonna make it landscape. We'll keep CMYK. We'll set the raster effects down to 72 PPI. That's pixels per inch. We don't plan on printing this thing. And we'll create. All right, so let's just start with the lettering. Kim says, well, actually, let's start with dragging over Kim's, Kim's picture. I have a download, I'll drag it over, bam. Let's zoom out. Let's use the direct select tool. I'm gonna grab a node or come close to a node, hold shift. So it'll turn on its 45s. There we go. I'm gonna hold shift and grab a node and shrink this. Let's keep shrinking it. There we go. We'll zoom back in. All right, let's be social. Let's start putting down some stuff. I'm gonna go over to my layers. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm not gonna name it. Okay. I'm gonna lock the layer that the picture is on. Now let's start with some type. Let's be. We'll use the direct select tool, grab a node, hold shift, make that bigger. 
and this is going to be a Bernard. So while I have it selected, I'm going to come up top and change the font to Bernard. Bernard MT Condensed. I'm going to copy paste. That way I don't have to start by going back over to my other tool. I'm going to double triple click social. I'm going to go back to my direct select tool, go back to my characters and my fonts up top. And this is Hello Bella. Make this bigger. See if we can match what she's got in here. Uh, okay, let's double, triple click in here and double click. Make that a lowercase e. Make this whole thing a little bit bigger. All right, coming along so far. Now let's copy social, copy, paste. Shrink this down by holding shift and holding a node. We'll go over here. We'll hold shift and a node again and make it even smaller. And we'll say double triple click it and we'll say book. We'll click our direct select tool again. I'll click on something else and then click back, copy paste. Double triple click. We'll put now. Hit my direct select tool. Move it into place. Now I should have the last one that I just had in there loaded in my paste or in my clipboard. So paste. Look now. Double triple click. Social. I use my direct select tool. Click off. Paste. Double triple click, media. Use my direct select tool again, click off. Control V to paste. Double triple click, Venmo. Whoops, Venmo. Click my direct select tool, click off it again. Paste, drag into place. And we'll give our handle at KNG make it. That's very long. So let's click our direct select tool. Let's hide these layers. I'm gonna grab a node, hold shift, make this a lot smaller. I'm gonna put that up in there. All right, we got most of it in there. It's a little crowded. Let's, uh, let's cock the social to the side a little bit first. There you go, it's looking good. All right, now let's hide this back layer. Now this back layer is just making me confused. Hide it. All right, not too bad, not too bad. This is a good start, that's a good start. I'm gonna select, using my direct select tool, I'm gonna grab both of these Let's Be Social pieces and move these up. I'm gonna come over here to the book now. I'm gonna cock this to the side a little bit. I'll do the same over here. Actually, while I'm cocking this to the side, I'm not gonna hold shift, but I am gonna watch my angle over here. Yeah, over here on my properties panel, you can see that I just rotated it 20 degrees. So let's make it a flat 20 degrees. And then we'll click on social. We'll double click in angle, make that a flat 20 degrees, enter. Venmo, back over here. We'll make that a flat 20 degrees, enter. Let's grab each one of these. I'm gonna select Venmo, hold shift, select social, hold shift, select book now. Then I'm gonna come over to a line and I'm gonna align them top. Well, that, that looks odd. Control Z, undo. Let's align book now first. We'll do book now. And we'll align a social media. 
And now we'll do Venmo. We're aligning it to the word below it. All right, looks good. So I'm gonna use my direct select tool and select both of these things. And then I'm gonna group them, control G. Now they'll stick together. When I try to move one of them, they'll move together. I'm gonna do that to the other two. Let's nudge this up. And I use my direct select tool, select both of them, control G, that will group them. Same thing with book now, grab them with, whoops, grab them with my direct select tool, control G. All right, now I have a bunch of little pieces here that I can move around and keep them together. Okay, let's be social. She also wanted some icons and some QR codes. So I'm just gonna draw a box for these for now. We'll make everything, say, 1.5 inches. Let's release the restriction over here and do 1.5 inches so it's square. We'll maintain the proportions again, just to keep it that way. Use my direct select tool. And we'll just kind of place them in here. Control C, Control V, copy paste. Just, these are taking place of the icons for now. Paste, so I'll know where they go. I'm gonna use my direct select tool, select them all, select them all, keep it low so I don't get this font up here. Then I'm gonna align them all on their bottoms. Boom. Let's move these down out of the way. I'm gonna copy these three again. Oh, well, first let's go up and make sure they're spaced evenly. There we go. Now I'm gonna control V, control, Control C, Control V, copy paste. These will be the barcodes. All right, so my letters down here are a little bit big now. I'm gonna grab them all, hold shift, grab a node, shrink them all a little bit, bring them up here, shrink them a little bit more. Oop, oh, that's good. And we'll align these underneath them. All right, we'll line up Venmo. Let's just grab all of these. And we'll go align center. There we go. I'll grab social media and all of its icons and QR codes to be in align center. I'll grab book now and all of its QR codes to be, and we'll go align center. All right, let's grab all three of these. Oops, not the top font, don't get crazy. Grab the would-be QR code, would-be icon, and Venmo. I'll grab all three of these and we'll control G group. We'll do the same for social, whoops. Control Z, we'll do the same for social media and its would-be icons, control G. Book now and its would-be icons, control G. We'll grab everything and I'll come up here and we'll do horizontal distributed center. All right, they're all centered. I mean, these two are close, but technically they're centered. So, all right, look pretty good. Let's work on these fonts now. We can, uh, let's draw a box around the back of these fonts. So now we'll add new layer. We'll call this layer the backer. Start to make the backer. We're gonna drag that layer below the layer with all the fonts and, and words on it. Let's see how big this thing is. I'm gonna grab everything. Oop, it's 10 inches tall. So let's go ahead and make it like, can we say eight inches tall total? So we'll say seven inches tall total. All right. Now let's work on the backer. I'm gonna select the backer layer, hit the direct select tool to release everything. I'm gonna go grab the rectangle tool, but I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'm just gonna draw a little square back here. Just back here. Right behind everything, oh, it's black. I'm gonna go over here and change the fill. 
I'm gonna pick a fill swatch that will kind of stand out but not get in the way. Looks good. Whoops, hit my direct select tool to get off of this tool. How wide is it? 6.1, no, that's making it even six. So, six. All right, now let's work on the fonts. We'll start up here. These are looking pretty good. I don't like how the S is so low, so let's conk it a little bit more. I'll bring, let it be in a little bit more. Oops, control Z. Up, 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 up. All right, let's go ahead and create an outline of this bad boy. So we'll go to object, path, type, type, <laughs> create outlines or shift control O. Now we'll go to the Pathfinder tool, object, Pathfinder, Oop. window, Pathfinder, and we will unite them all. So now it's all one object. It's not a font anymore, and they're all connected, so you won't cut them apart. Let's ungroup these, because I want to move this S up so it's level with the L, but I am going to select the dot and social, group them. Now I'm going to hold shift and grab that S, and then I'm gonna to go to a line top. All right, looks good. Let's add to the backer. Well, let's, yeah, let's add to the backer now. So I'm gonna group these using my direct select tool, grab everything, control G. Let it be, I'm gonna go ahead and create outlines again. So type, create outlines. I'm going to group all of these. I'm going to grab everything, Control G. I'm going to come down to my layers, open up this layer, expand this layer. Right here where this is, this is highlighted, this is my Let's Be Social. I'm going to grab this or click on it, highlight it, and I'm going to duplicate group using this little hamburger up top. I'm going to drag my new group it just created, see how it's highlighted, down to my backer. Oop. And I'm gonna lock this top layer so I can't mess with it. With this back layer, oop, I didn't draw it, I didn't drag it. It stayed. Okay, now it's there. Let's make sure it's there. Let's hide this layer for a second. Okay, it's there. I lock this top layer. I'm gonna highlight group. I'm gonna activate that layer, target it. We'll start adding a stroke to it. We're gonna give it the same color stroke as the box below it. Now I'm gonna just give it 20. Nope. Let's go 30. Nope. 40. Still not there. Let's just go 50. 50 looks good. I don't know, is it too much? Let's, let's stick with 40. Let's go back to 40 pixels. So now it's got a 40 pixel stroke around both led, let's be and social. But you see how it gives me those jagged little pieces down here? I don't want these jagged little pieces. So let's go to stroke. We're gonna click on the word stroke. And we're gonna round the corners, round the corners. All right, looking pretty good. Let's hide my layers. Let's grab this back layer. Actually, let's go back to layers. We're gonna hide this top layer, it's getting confusing. Now we'll grab this and we're gonna go up to object, path, outline stroke. And we're gonna go back to our pathfinder window, pathfinder window. Mine's actually, I dragged it over here and made it a shortcut. <clears throat> Then I'm going to unite everything that's there, everything that's selected. It becomes one big blob. 
Now I'm going to immediately go over to release and release everything. It kind of lets everything be its own little object. And then I'm going to unite everything again. So it took out all those little pieces in the middle. See, it's all one big piece now. All right, now I'm gonna marry both this top piece and this bottom piece. So I'm gonna use my direct select tool, grab them both, unite using my Pathfinder tool. Now it's all one piece, see? Control Z to put it back. I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna select my blob tool. It's over here underneath your paintbrush tool. Hold it down and you'll get a blob paintbrush tool. And while that's selected, I'm gonna draw a line from here to the corner, kinda round it out. There you go. I'll do the same over here. Well, Control Z, I don't like that. I'm gonna leave it like that. I think that looks fine. But I'm gonna select everything and then you see that blob tool, it made it so it's all one object now. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna release it to get rid of that middle section and then immediately unite it again. Done. Now let's go back to my layers and bring back that top layer. There you go, look at that. Then we just gotta start filling some things in. Well, let's ungroup these and work on this font down here. It's a little thin looking. We'll zoom in. So we'll ungroup. We'll ungroup. Ungroup. I'm going to grab all these font pieces. I'm going to come over to stroke and we'll select black as a stroke. There you go. It's a little thick, but it's better. I think it'll cut. Actually, let's go like. 1.5 stroke, 1.5 pixels. Let's go like 1.25 pixels. Okay, that's that's not bad looking. That's looking good. All right, I think it's time to uh, go get these icons and QR codes. Well, first let's save this. Save as. Let's be social. I don't want to lose it. So this is uh, where Canva comes in. Canva is great. We're going to go get some icons that we can use in place of whatever icon Kim drew. And to do that, I'm going to start. I like to use like poster because it gives me the most space. So I'm going to start with a new project. I'm going to go to poster. Come over on the left. I'm going to go to elements. See how I've already been Googling. We'll start with a date icon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have a lot of icons here. Let's see. I like this one. This one looks pretty easy. And it's like all one piece. So we'll take, keep that one. Now I'm gonna need a globe icon. Globe icon. Saw so one in here. I just want graphics. So I'm gonna select the filter of graphics. Oh, this is the www one. I'm gonna drag that over. And then I'm gonna need a Venmo logo icon, but I'll get that in a second. Let's go file, download. Now, if you're a pro member, you can download it as an SVG. So we're gonna download it as an SVG with a transparent background. Download. Now I'm gonna to go to my download folder. Here are my graphics, right click, open with Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here they are. I'm gonna grab this guy and this guy. Control C, Control V. Oops, I missed the clock. Control Z, drag everything. Well, let's group this there. Let's group this guy, Control G. Now grab everything, Control C. Control V, shrink this down. All right, this, I want 1.5 inches. So I'm gonna come over here, 1.5. I'll drag that in place. 
Oh, they're not 1.5 inches. They're a little small. All right, all right. I'm gonna hold the node and hold shift. Drag these down. Get them where that black box is. Center it. And let's get rid of the black box. Delete. Let's shrink this guy. Well, how big are these black boxes? Oh, they're just under an inch. Okay. So we'll make this guy just under an inch. Hold shift. Grab that black box. Delete it. We don't need it. Now let's go grab a Venmo icon. I happen to have one pulled up already. So I'm going to go copy image, right click, copy image. Back over here to Illustrator. Control V, paste. Whoa, that's big. I'm gonna grab a node and hold shift, shrink it down, shrink it down. Way too big, let's shrink that thing down. I don't want the whole thing, so. Now I'm gonna select off of it. I'm gonna come over to my image trace, which is in your window, image trace. I'm gonna select it. Now I want three colors. I'm gonna let it do its thing. It's gonna process this whole thing and spit out what should be three colors. It's, this is so big, it should be a really crisp. Yeah, look at that, it's really crisp. So we're just gonna expand it, ungroup it. Now I just want the V in the middle, so delete everything else. Take this V, let's make this V, it's like one inch. And we'll change the fill color to black. A little bit more. Boop. Center it in there. Get in there. Let's get rid of that black box. All right, looking good. Control S to save what we got so far. Actually, all this stuff could be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hold Shift and select all of these. shift and I'm gonna make everything just a little bit bigger. Take up more of this space in here. Yeah, there you go, it's looking a little better. Move everything up. I'm gonna move all these icons down a little bit. Now it, that is looking good, but it's time for some QR codes. So I have all my QR codes that I need. Here are all my URLs. I'm gonna go back to Canva. Let's go back over to Canva. We'll close this window, I don't need it anymore. Home. I'm gonna do, I think it's an Instagram square. Yeah, here you go, Instagram post square. This should give you some good pixel size. It should be like a good resolution. And uh, it should be nice and clear and it's a square. Now over on the left, there's this little, little tool called QR code. We'll open this up. I'm gonna go grab my first QR code. Copy, paste. Generate QR code. I'm gonna make this the whole size of the Instagram post. Okay, file, download. Now I'm gonna download it as a PNG. I'm gonna leave it so with a transparent background. Download. Now I'm gonna go to my downloads folder and back to Illustrator. Wait, and my downloads folder. Here's my QR code. Just gonna drag it onto the board. Back over to Illustrator. Select this, hold the node. Let's shrink it with holding shift. I 
don't know the size. Hold on, let's click on this one. This is a little over one inch, so I'm gonna copy this size. Come back over to this QR code. Double click, paste in the size, enter. I'm gonna put this in this box. Now I'm not gonna delete this black box back there. I'm gonna leave it. But I am gonna line it up a little better. So I'm going to use that black box as a cut mark or a score mark later on because the PNGs won't show up in my cut file like to cut. Need another QR code. This is our link tree. Back over to the QR code generator. Double triple click, delete, paste in the new one. Let's delete this guy on here. Generate QR code. Make him the size of the whole thing. Oop. File. Download. PNG transparent background. Back to Illustrator. Back to the download folder. Here's my next PNG. Drag it in. Back to Illustrator. Double triple click. Oops. Oh, I thought I'd be able to cheat. I'm gonna shrink it a little bit. And then go see what size this black square is. Copy. Black square. Line that up. One more QR code. Copy. Back to Canva. Delete this one, paste this one. Delete this one, and generate this one. Oh, now you see, <clears throat> pardon me. Now you see how many dots this is. I don't know if we'll be able to engrave that really nicely so it'll be able to be read by a phone. I don't know, I don't trust it, so we're gonna delete it. I'm gonna go to Bitly, right? This is where you can truncate or shorten your QR codes or any any URL really, but this is where you can shorten it. So, you know, they want you to join or start for free, but you don't need to, you can scroll down and then you just put your, you just put your, uh, wait, did I already do this? Let's go back one. Let's just go to Bitly, Bitly. Yeah, you can just paste it in. You don't have to join, paste it in, shorten. Here's my new one, copy, back over to Canva, delete this big long one, paste this one in, generate QR code. Look how much more simple this, this QR code is. We'll make this one the size of the whole thing. And we'll go to file, download, keep that transparent background. Back over to Illustrator. Pull up my download folder, pull in my new PNG, shrink this one down, holding shift. And we'll check the size of this black box again. Back over to the QR code, paste, enter. We'll line this up. I'll zoom in, line everything up nice and neat. Just tap in my arrow keys. We're, we'll select all of these. Hold on. I'm going to select this background layer. And I'm going to lock it. Now I can grab all of these at once. I will make sure they're aligned in the middle. There you go. Grab these. One center. One center. I think it was fine. All right. All right, looks good. We'll unlock the background. It's my little sign. Now we need to make this background a little standy piece. So we're gonna use quarter inch MDF because that's like all of our stuff. So I've seen a lot of people use acrylic. It looks nice, it looks beautiful, 
But our aesthetic and everything that we make is quarter inch MDF and it's painted. So we're gonna keep that same aesthetic here in the sign. So keeping that in mind, our MDF is 0.24 inches thick. So we're gonna start by drawing a, a base. So let's give this thing a base. We'll keep the rounded corners. We'll give this thing a base. What is that? We'll make it six inches wide six inches wide and we'll make it four inches tall. I think that's all. Move this down here. Now with this selected, I'm gonna select my dropper tool over here. And I'm gonna select whatever color I want it. We'll keep it the same color. Back to my direct select tool. I'm gonna draw a little slot for that tab to go in. We haven't made the tab yet but I'm gonna draw a slot for it. Let's move this down and make room for the tab. I'm gonna go back to my rectangle tool. I want a hard rectangle tool with a hard clean edges to accept the tab. We'll draw the rectangle. We'll just make it four inches wide. Four inches wide and then we'll make it 0.25. Allow a little bit room for painting. So we'll make it an even quarter inch tall. Let's fill this with black for now so I can see it. Oh, cancel. Direct select tool to get off of that. I'm going to select both rectangles. We'll center them on the middle, center them on the center. Good to go. I'm going to take this little uh, black rectangle tool, copy paste, and I'm going to Attach this to the bottom over here. Now I know this is 0.25 inches. All right. So I'll just line this up. I don't want to try to move everything and lose the the spacing here, or group it and make everything come onto one um, layer. So I'm just going to see where this little dot lines up, and then try to line this little dot up with it. I'll select this thing, Ooh. select this backer, this backer. Almost. Oh, that's pretty close, right? Yeah, that's pretty dead on. So now I'm going to drag this node up without holding shift. So I just want to get it just inside here so that it's touching, so that both of these pieces are touching. And let's, let's use this, select this uh, little dropper tool and color this thing the same as the background. There you go. There you go, there's your tab. Let's make it a real tab. I think that's up on this level. What rectangle? Oh, all these things are up here, so. I'm going to select all of these by holding shift. I'm going to drag this layer down to this backer layer. And I'm going to select this little tiny little rectangle, my little tab and the big rectangle in the back and we'll unite them. There you go. There's your standee. It's ready to go. Now we got to make it a cut file. What I like to do is I'll select everything over here. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. I got a duplicate of everything. Now all of this stuff here will be my cuts and all of this stuff here will be my backer and I'll keep everything. There was score marks, so I'll sh I should be able to find it. But we don't need these QR codes anymore. So let's select these by holding the shift, delete. And we're just gonna select everything on here. Ooh, I forgot to make these uh, these down here. I forgot to do the create outlines. I'm gonna select all three at once. And then go to type, create outlines. Back to window, pathfinder tool, unite, unite everything. There, now everything's good to go, ready to be cut. Let's do the same thing over here since I forgot to do it before I copied it. So create outlines. And then when 
window, window, pathfinder. That was already open. Unite. Unite. All right. So everything over here is going to be scored. Everything over here is going to be cut. We'll select everything over here. We're going to get rid of the fill, so no fill. And we'll make everything over here a score mark. We'll go with blue. Actually, let's go ahead and add my, my color palette. So we'll go to other libraries, my swatches, K and G swatches. And here's my little window. These are all my Glowforge colors. These are all the different colors it will recognize. I'll just drag that in. So now for stroke, I'm going to use dark blue, number two. I see that some of these things have boxes around them. They're masked coming out of Canva. So we'll just release the mask. I'll grab this outer box and delete it over here. Let's ungroup it. So like this, we'll release the mask. Delete. I think that's it. I think that's the only thing that needed to mask. Now we'll grab this out backer. This is going to be our backer. We'll just grab this and we'll make this stroke mark red, real red, number 10. All right, our backer is done. Let's grab everything and hit group, group it. For over here, everything's gonna get cut, so we'll highlight everything. We'll lose the background color, or the fill color, and we'll give everything a red stroke because we're gonna cut everything out. Now we need to release the same frames. We should have done that before we um, did a copy paste. We'll release the masks, get rid of this stuff. We will ungroup, release the mask, delete, and then we'll keep these boxes or these little red cut lines around the QR codes. That way they'll cut out the QR codes after they're done engraving and then we'll be able to paste them on or glue them on. Oh, I forgot about the base. So select the base. We're going to say no fill. And then we'll stroke this red. We want to cut out. And we'll make sure this is grouped. Control G. Let's move this up next to it. Hold shift. And rotate it 45, 90 degrees. All right. Time to file. Export as... Oop, not a, not a PNG. We'll do export as an SVG. I'll just put it in downloads for now. Let's be social. And we'll export it. Don't have any presentation attributes. No stylings. Uh, the fonts we've already created cut. We have already created the outlines, so we don't care if it converts them to SVGs. Uh, the embedded images, uh, those are going to be our QR codes. So yeah, we want to embed those images. Uh, layer names doesn't really matter. I'm not going to look at the layer names again. And then okay, that's it. Oh, do not check minify or responsive. This will allow it to resize inside the Glowforge. Uh, exporting it without these checked, it should come in the same size as you're exporting it now. Step two, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed some quarter inch MDF because that's what we're gonna cut it out of. Now you can cut these signs. I know if you've seen them on Etsy or lots of other places, you can cut them out of acrylic. And we considered that. I do think that that's a really cool look because all of our signs are made of quarter inch MDF. We felt like this would be the best look. I think it's gonna be- It'll um, match. Yeah. It stays with the aesthetic. Yes, yes. In keeping with our aesthetic. <laughs> we'll also need some paint, some glue. That's our star bond. And then we'll need some masking, some 12 inch masking for our Glowforge board. And then uh, 
super secret tip right here. Pro tip some, coming at you a little later. Some duct tape. <laughs> Step three. We're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna bring the quarter inch MDF over to the Glowforge and cut it out. But first, yes. we're gonna paint it white. Let it dry really well. I spent 30 minutes with the hair dryer to get it nice and yeah, nice I, and dry. I told him, I was like, okay, make sure that dries for a couple hours. I rolled it. I was like, let it dry for a couple hours. You want it really dry. And he was like, okay. And then I heard the hair dryer. <laughs> I gave the hair dryer a workout. <laughs> 30 minutes later, we're able to mask it. And now we'll throw it in the Glowforge and give it a cut and engrave. Inside Glowforge, I'm gonna use the thick draft board settings. And for the engravings, I'm going to use draft photo for all of my engravings. And then I'm going to use for my score marks, just the draft settings for scores. I don't need them very deep, just enough so I can see them to put my stuff on. And then for cut, I'm just using proof grade. Time to paint. Now, before we remove the masking, especially on these QR codes, we're gonna take them out and spray paint them black. That way, when we remove the masking tape, that white and the black will have a high contrast. Should work well on the phone. For the rest of it, we're gonna go ahead and remove the masking and paint as usual. We're gonna use our little tape trick here to make sure our pieces are stuck to our tape so that they're easy to paint and they don't move while you're trying to dab each one. Step five. Time to assemble. <laughs> We're gonna use this Starbond Thick to glue everything to the backer. Our little QR codes and all of our little pieces are gonna get glued down now inside those score marks. Now the easiest way to glue it down is to first put the glue inside all the score marks, then align all of your letters inside those score marks. Remember, less is more. You don't want this glue oozing out from around because it will leave a kind of a white hazy shadow when it dries. Pro tip, this is where the duct tape comes in. To remove all of that little masking from the QR code, I just use this super strong duct tape and it usually pulls right off. Sometimes I'll have to stick it again, give it a little twist as I lift, but this stuff works great to get all the little. Yes, it's amazing. I don't know where I saw this trick, but whoever showed it to me or wherever I saw it along the way, thank you. That is a pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> And we're in. Now with the coat of paint, it is a little more snug. That's why I left that little extra pixel around the, the little hole. All right, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think it looks popping. It is super sick, super sweet. I love how it, it stands up and you can definitely use all of the QR codes. I'll give it a test right here live. <laughs> yeah, I think this is perfect for our booth. It totally matches everything that we're doing and it'll be super convenient. Yeah, there we go. It's ready to go, good to go. Popped up instantly. Yeah. Yeah, right out of wood. So, you know, you think you gotta make these QR codes out of something, I don't know, metal? metal I don't know. Or thin, but you don't. Yeah. As long as it has that high contrast and it keeps to those corners. You should be good to go. Yeah, I love it. It's gonna be perfect. And the great thing is you can take it apart, take lay it, it apart. flat in our bag. Yep, that's what I was thinking. And big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. This idea actually came from one of you. Somebody asked for this a few weeks ago and then we had such a success with the little QR code on our standee that I was like, We're doing we, need it. To, we need to act on that. So thank you patrons for the ideas and keep them coming. Otherwise, uh, we're about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Oh, and don't forget on Test Cut Tuesdays, we're always trying out something new, painting something new, or just testing something new. That's hence the name, Test Cut Tuesday. All right, for real, I am out of time. We will see you next Friday. I'm totally gonna balance this. Upside down on its S. Ooh, easy. Ooh, too easy. Ooh, too easy. Sure.